All right, let's be perfectly honest right off the top. The Boston Bruins have not been playing their best hockey of the season over the past couple of weeks. Still, they're amassing points and extending their lead atop the NHL standings. I'm going to talk about last night's game against New Jersey, my bird's eye view of the game in Ottawa two nights ago, and more on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren. And this is a daily show where we discuss all things Spoked Beat. Today is Thursday, December 29th. Holidays have been a blur, losing track of the day, the hour, the minute. But I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day. The podcast is free and available on Apple, Spotify, whatever podcast app you use, as well as YouTube, where you can get a video form of the show every day, Monday to Friday, sometimes on weekends as well. Please do smash that subscribe button so that you never miss a thing. You can find the podcast on Twitter, Instagram at locked NHL Bruins, and you can find me, my dad jokes, hockey tweets at Ian C. McLaren. Apologies for no episode yesterday. It was a travel day for the McLaren family on Boxing Day. We packed up the van and made our trek down the 401 from Guelph, Ontario to Ottawa with a almost two-hour detour through a 60-kilometer stretch, which was uh, not great. But we got there in time for a holiday meal with my parents, my sister, and her family, who all still live in Ottawa, where I grew up. And then on Tuesday, after a delightful lunch with my co-worker, Chris, who I met for the first time, we attended the Boston Bruins at the Ottawa Senators, which I'll talk about in uh, the second part of the show. But let's begin with last night's game in New Jersey, where once again, the Bruins started off a bit slow, shaking off Rust, stuffing, turkey, cranberry sauce, mashed potatoes, squash, carrots, peas, whatever they had ingested, probably some adult beverages, let's be honest, over the three-day holiday break. Trent Frederick, who frustrated me to no end during the game on Tuesday by closing his hand on the puck, picking it up, chucking it from the slot out to center ice, taking a penalty, allowing the Ottawa Senators to score a power play goal. He made good by scoring the game opener against New Jersey, his seventh goal of the season, putting him just one shy of his career high from a year ago. Uh, This came after he woke the team up by trading some fist punches with Devils defenseman Kevin Ball at 9.31 of the first period. He then scored the game's opening goal, 8.57 of the second, finished one assist shy of the Gordie Howe hat trick. Devils captain Nico Heischer answered early in the third, but Patrice Bergeron stepped up and scored the game winner off a tip from a Hampus Lindholm wrister. It was his 77th career game-winning goal, tying him with Phil Esposito for second most in club history. The ageless one now has 14 goals on the season, fourth goal in his past five games. Sadly, he scored a a goal in the game in Ottawa the night before, but it was wiped out after an offside review, breaking my heart, robbing me of the chance to see Patrice Bergeron scoring a goal in person. Head coach Jim Montgomery echoing all of us, saying there's not enough words to describe Patrice Bergeron. 
big time goal. Not everyone goes to those hard areas, much less a 35 plus guy with a thousand points on his record. That's why he scored. That's why he's got a thousand points. That's why he's the Bruins leader. Pavel Zaka, the former New Jersey Devil, visiting his old barn for the second time in a week, uh, scored a big time empty netter off a fantastic individual effort to give the Bruins a 3 1 lead, which they now, uh, sorry, which they did not relinquish. The Bruins are now an unbelievable 28 4 and 3 on the season. And Patrice Bergeron. When asked why the Bruins are off to such a, it's not even a great start anymore. It's just a, an unreal campaign. Tight group off the ice, go the extra mile on the ice. You sacrifice for each other. And it certainly helps that Linus Allmark was lights out in net. He made some incredible saves, including a amazing kind of diving blocker save. To keep the Bruins in the game, he's now 21 and 1, leads the NHL in goals against average, save percentage, and he's the second fastest to 20 wins in a season, tied with Andre Vasilevsky and Andrew Hammond, behind Tiny Thompson, who has the NHL record for 20 wins in 23 games. It was also his 39th win of the season, or sorry, of the calendar year. Tying Tuka Rask for uh, 39 wins with one game left on the calendar in 2022. So, remains to be seen whether or not he'll get the start in uh, the confines of TD Garden on Saturday against the Buffalo Sabres, or if Jeremy Swainwell will get the start to keep Allmark fresh for the Winter Classic on Monday. We'll have to wait and see what Jim Montgomery decides. The Bruins didn't play their best game of the season last night, let's be honest. But for the second time in a week, they went into New Jersey and beat the Devils on the second leg of a back-to-back. And and that's pretty impressive considering the Devils have been a pretty good team team all season long they are two seven and one over their last 10 after last night's loss so they're really slipping they're now six points behind carolina atop the metropolitan standings clinging to that second spot barely two points ahead of pittsburgh washington three points ahead of the rangers only four points ahead of the islanders so you know, they're in danger of slipping out of a playoff spot after that 13-game win streak they went on earlier this season. Full credit to the Bruins for getting it done and taking three out of a possible four points from these two games coming out of the holiday break. One of those games, of course, was against the Ottawa Senators, which I attended. And uh, we will talk about after the break. But first, a quick word about today's sponsor, Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season, NBA, NHL. They've got it all at betonline.net. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, futures, props, over-unders, whatever your interest is, they got you covered. Go to their website or use your mobile device to learn more at BetOnline, where the game starts. I should add... From last night's game, big bear of the night goes to Linus Allmark. Obviously, he was incredible. 30 saves on 31 shots to give the Bruins the win. Now, I was fortunate enough to be in attendance on Tuesday in Ottawa. It was a packed house. 
tons of Bruins jerseys in the crowd. I wore my circa 1996 Cam Neely official jersey that I was given for Christmas back in the day. My dad, for whatever reason, had a number 22 Ken Baumgartner jersey with the A that he wore in the late 90s. Uh, my wife, Lauren, wore a Bruins jersey. Uh, the boys wore some Bruins toques. My mom wore a Senator's Andrew Hammond jersey. Uh, and my sister, brother-in-law, sat a few seats down the row wearing their Senator's jerseys. But I would say there was maybe a quarter of the rink filled with black and gold. One of my oldest friends in the world was also at the game. He was wearing a sweet old Ray Bork uh, jersey that was a, also a hoodie, which was pretty sweet. Anyways, uh, we got there. Again, it was a slow start for the Bruins. And again, I just I can't even put into words how frustrated I was when Trent Frederick picked up that puck, chucked it down the ice, and the Bruins gave up a power play goal on that penalty kill scored by uh, Tim Stutzla, assisted by Thomas Shabbat and Drake Batherson. However, a couple minutes later, Jake DeBrusque scored that incredible goal where intentionally, perhaps not, he shot the puck wide, gobbled it up off the end boards, and just squeaked it over the goal line behind Cam Talbot, who was incredible in this game for the Ottawa Senators. I believe he set a regular season record by stopping 49 pucks in the eventual shootout win over the Ottawa Senators. Uh, he made some amazing saves, especially in the third period. There was one uh, where the Bruins had a power play near the end of the game where David Krejci shot the puck. It was blocked. He got it back, fired it. The Bruins were going with their five forward power play unit. Uh, they had been out there for a while, so they were pretty gassed. Krejci got all that he could off it. Talbot with an unreal glove save to keep the puck out of the net. Um, but thankfully, as the Bruins were shooting 27 pucks on net in the third period, one squeaked by Pavel Zaka scoring after the penalty had expired to force it to overtime, uh, where I just saw some of the craziest action in overtime. You know, sometimes when it goes to overtime, it's three on three, teams will get defensive minded just want to preserve uh their one point not really go all out but both teams were back and forth and um somehow kept the puck out of the back of the net Jeremy Swayman in particular made some unreal saves it was a battle of the goaltenders especially in overtime Again, Talbot making 49 saves, 26 in the third period, eight during that power play late in the third period, another four saves in overtime, and then turned away all three of Boston's shootout attempts. Jeremy Swayman was impressive for the Bruins. He made a couple of huge stops, uh, especially in overtime. The Senators, I think, tried twice to score on him between the legs. And before Christmas, I had wished for um, a save percentage for Swayman over 900. He's now at 902. So that wish was granted. Um, just so fun to be in the building. Uh, I was so relieved when Zaka scored that second goal. 
to get things to overtime. Uh, I was on the edge of my seat all through the final frame. Jumped up halfway a couple times um, to try and celebrate what I hoped would be a game-winning goal, but alas, didn't come to be. Uh, After the game, Jeremy Swayman said, hats off to Cam Talbot. It was a fun goalie battle. Zaka scored five hole with the wrist shot from the slot to tie things at two. The Bruins were coming on in waves. I tweeted during the second remission. I was just hoping for some third period magic. And indeed, they came through with that goal. Zaka ending a 17 game goal drought. You know, as two in a row after scoring the empty netter last night. He said a lot of guys talked to him. They value what he does on the ice, creating chances, creating opportunities for other players. The way the Bruins are playing as a team, it helps you mentally and physically, especially when you can talk to players like Bergeron, Marchand, Krejci. Um, It really helps to keep your um, confidence up. Alex Dabrinkit scored a beauty for the Senators to give them the 2-1 lead, which they did not hold on to. The Bruins did have some chances. I can think specifically, I think it was in the first period where Craig Smith found himself all alone in front of the net. Cam Talbot showing his dominance early uh, by stopping him with a glove save. Um, Boston, again, thought they scored, beating Talbot with a short side wrist shot. From the left, face-off dot at 225 of the second period. I rubbed it in my family's face. It was wiped out. They gave it back to me, which was not uh, not super fun. But credit to the Bruins. They gave Cam Talbot all he could handle. And they gave him a lot of credit after the game. Uh, Jake DeBrusque said he used to skate with Cam in the summers when they were both in Edmonton. DeBrusque, of course, going home during the offseason. Talbot was a member of the Oilers. He has a lot of respect for him. Stinks that they couldn't get the two points, but they put all they could on Talbot, and he was incredible. He got several standing ovations during the game, and uh, you could tell that the home crowd was super appreciative of the effort that he put in now my bird's eye view I test for me Jake DeBrusque was the most energetic guy out on the ice he played so well for for uh the Bruins in this one that goal he scored I was in the upper level scored right down in front of us and you know For me, any talk of the Bruins breaking the bank to acquire a forward with a big name at the deadline quashed because of how well Jake DeBrusque is playing at the moment. I'll talk about that more after the break. But Big Bear of the Night, I'm giving it to Jake DeBrusque. He had four shots on goal, three hits, brought the energy, brought the... Um, offense and was rewarded with that sweet kind of self alley-oop goal that he scored. Bergeron with eight shots on goal. The ninth was that goal that was waved off. Um, Marchand with five. David Pasternak with six. There was one point in this game where The Bruins had a power play. I believe it was late in the second period. David Pasternak attempted a one-timer, fell flat on his butt, and fanned on it. That kind of was the theme of the game for the Bruins through the first couple periods. But, man, did they turn it on and played one of their most dominant periods of the season. 27-5, to the shot difference in the third period. Uh, Unfortunately, they couldn't get the extra goal. They couldn't get a goal on their four shots in overtime, nor could they beat Talbot in the shootout. So deflating to 
watch that amazing five minutes of three on three time and then to have it go to a shootout you know you're in the building you get the shoveling off of the ice goalie setting up figuring out who's going to go first for me just go 10 minutes of five on uh, sorry of three on three overtime probably the same amount of time and no doubt someone is going to score at some point over the 10 minutes get rid of the shootout go 10 minutes five on five and and call it a day but full credit to the crowd in ottawa great atmosphere there in the nation's capital um hopefully they can get a rink closer to the center of town the parking situation there's a nightmare took us like 45 minutes to get out of the parking lot um but it's a great building no bad seats and this team they have a lot of belief in this team in that uh fan base and for good reason they're Top six forwards are dynamic. Get Josh Norris back in there. Um, get, yeah, just full health. Their bottom six was pretty banged up. Uh, but they have a very talented group of forwards. Tim Stutzla impressed me the most on the other end of the ice for the Boston Bruins. But for our team, it was the uh, young Jake DeBrusque who looked great. And I'm going to talk about him more here in a moment after the break. Thank you once again for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your day every single day. The podcast is free and available wherever you get podcasts. Please do smash that subscribe button and get on board for what we hope will be an unreal 2023 here on Locked On Boston Bruins. Check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast next. All the top stories from around the world of sports available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. All right, so I've seen a lot of talk recently about the Bruins adding a forward at the deadline, like a Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves. From my perspective, from my bird's eye view of the game in Ottawa, your top six right now, is just so dynamic that I don't know if you need to do that. Jake DeBrusque belongs on that top line with Brad Marchand and Patrice Bergeron. He's not being carried by those two guys. He's bringing another element that can't be overlooked. He has this game-breaking ability. It's like the Jake DeBrusque we saw in years past against the Toronto Maple Leafs in the playoffs just able to break a game open. And we saw that the other night with that. Nothing was going right for the Bruins. And all of a sudden, he moved, breaks into the zone, banks the puck off the end boards, tucks it behind Cam Talbot. And a guy like Patrick Kane, yes, he has a fantastic career fantastic resume but look at his numbers right now compared to jake debrusque's he just doesn't have the same level of jump perhaps it's because he's playing in chicago maybe he'd be rejuvenated playing in boston but there's also the off ice stuff that i just don't really want to be a part of I, i'm not a patrick kane fan and would prefer to ride with a guy like Jake DeBrusque, who has proven his worth for the Boston Bruins. I tweeted that the other night. Someone asked, what do they need? Well, you probably need some more depth on defense. There is Mike Riley, Anton Strahlman still in the mix, Jakob Sborrell. Uh, what they really need, though, is some extra pop in the bottom six that you can likely acquire cheaper than what you can get in a guy like Patrick Kane. Uh, you know, the bottom six right now, Hall, Coyle, Frederick, and then a mix of Felino, no six Smith and uh, no sick Smith, Felino and Greer. Uh, no sick was the odd man out last night, but if you could get uh 
have a fourth line of like Felino, Nosek, Frederick, and then add some scoring to go with Hall and Coyle, then you'd really, really be onto something. Although, you know, full credit to Frederick. He's got seven goals in the season. He has a pretty wicked shot. If he used it a bit more, uh, the Bruins could really be onto something there. But just look at Chicago, perhaps a guy like Max Domi, who you could likely get for cheaper, put him on the third line, can really open things up for Coyle and Hall. And then you have Frederick able to add some offense on the fourth line. Domi would certainly be a lot cheaper. Anyways, I was impressed with Frederick last night with that goal. I was supremely frustrated with him the night before with that penalty. Uh, but let's be honest, the Bruins don't need to do too much tinkering uh, right now. Injuries could come up, but for the time being, the roster is pretty much optimized. And despite the slow starts recently, full credit to Jeremy Swayman and Linus Allmark, especially for giving them primetime goaltending that's keeping them in games and allowing them to sneak these points amid a quote-unquote slump over the past couple of, of, of weeks. Up next is a matinee Saturday against the Buffalo Sabres. We're going to break that game down, uh, preview that game on tomorrow's podcast, do our belated weekly cup check, which we usually do on Thursdays, and bring you all the latest on the Boston Bruins, who I believe are off today, not practicing after the two-game road trip on consecutive nights. So glad I was able to go to the game the other night. So fun to be in the stands to cheer for our boys. Uh, glad I got to see this iteration of the Bruins live. And hopefully I can look back and say that I got to see them in person in a season in which they ended up on top. Hope you're all taking care of yourselves, taking care of each other, enjoying the holidays. If you're back at work, I hope this show can help you um you know break up the day if you're off out and about bring locked on bruins with you in the car and uh we'll talk to you again here tomorrow on locked on boston bruins part of the locked on podcast network your favorite team every single day